Hey, 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 everyone. This is Dave O'Connor, and uh, hope you're doing really great out there. This is a view of uh, downtown Vancouver. Hey, yourself. Fantastic. Boo yourself. Yay. You're on from London. Hey, Charlotte. Hey, Tony from Cork. Bali, hey eh, Bali. You're not in Bali, Bali. This is the other side of the, this is the penthouse where I live over here. This is the view over the other side. It's a bit overcast today, but generally it's very, very nice. Edinburgh, St. Albans. Hi, Natasha. Hey, Nadia. Yeah, Vancouver is the business. That's a uh, over there is uh, Granville Island is down there, uh, Burrard Bridge, hey, 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 how's it all going? Hi from Las Vegas, hi Wendy, how's it going? So I'm very excited to be on here tonight, we're going to talk about a few things on how to overcoming fear. Shout out to your husband, Tony. Hey, Tony, how's it going? Chatting about this today, yay. English Bay, yeah, exactly. We're just a few minutes away from English Bay here. You're just about to do your blueprints. Well, you've got uh, you've got an even better um, thing now. Hey, Wes Linden. Sophia, yes, we're definitely gonna catch up, my friend. Wes Linden. Is on the line, folks. If you uh, love Wes Linden, and he's super popular, of course, um, then give him a heart party here. Show us some love. Show us some love. All these people saying hi to you, Wes. Uh, let me just tap the screen. It's Bulgaria, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. How's it going there? Um, as a matter of interest, Wes, I have. Uh, I literally have your book in front of me. I always have your book around. It somehow seems to be hanging around everywhere. If you haven't read this book, it's amazing. 79 Network Marketing Tips. Um, it really is a game changer in the industry. Um, yes, I love that bridge in the background as well. It's very cool, isn't it? I always say that over the other side of that bridge is your dreams and your goals. And the only thing stopping you from getting there is your fears, is your own mind, isn't it? So, um, so it's very cool. He didn't hear. Okay, Tony, how's it going? There you go. Yes, 79 um, network marketing tips. The CD and the book, I recommend that you get. Um, so, yeah, we're going to talk about the, um, really, how do you overcome the fear of especially what other people think that's what i get a lot of i'm sure um wes gets that all the time uh, and i'm actually going to refer to something in uh, wes's book there and um, he talks about uh, a lot of overcoming uh, fear he talks a lot about that i'm um, so amazing to see so many of you from the uk on um you obviously stay up quite late huh um yeah so, you know, in a nutshell, the easiest way to overcome the fear of what other people think, or fear of anything, in fact, um, is to take massive action. I mean, we all know that, right? I mean, um, whether it's consistent action, whether it's, that's the busiest time of the day, is it, Claire? Ah, there you go. Um, whether it's inspired action, because I like to, I like the, the words inspired action, because um, isn't it true that we could be taking, um, action but being busy being busy but not really not really high leverage actions and that's because we're again hiding behind the fears but you know we procrastinate we procrastinate in taking the actions that we know we should take whether it's getting uh, on the phone and talking to those people that we know we need to talk to or talking to people on our chicken list in fact um, I'm looking through Wes's book here as well let's see what he says Wes Linden says, uh, tip number 52 in his book, uh, and that is to love the phone. 
right, love the phone, that he's never known anybody to somehow um, really, you know, fight back and say, oh my God, you're, you know, you've called me at the wrong time and be really insulting on the phone. So you got to say, you got to really have the phone as your friend. The phone is actually your friend. And the first thing I will say to you, by the way, folks, is that you have to change your story. You have to change your story. In other words, what you're telling yourself is that, you know, they're going to think somehow less of me. Yeah. They're going to think, for example, that I'm trying to take advantage of them. They're going to think that I'm trying to sell them something that I've lowered myself to um, this, this level uh, in network marketing that is pyramid selling. And I've got news for you. I know Wes would say this as well. They don't care. <laughs> they actually, you think they think these certain things of you, but they actually do not care. They actually don't care. They are too worried about what other people think of them. They are too concerned and too caught up with themselves to even care about what you think. So you need to change your story. And Wes talked about this last week on his fantastic scope. You need to start changing your story and you need to tell yourself, well, actually, they are lucky to be hearing from me. They're lucky to be hearing from me. You know, I have an opportunity. I have something amazing. And wow, I mean, I can help people. I can help you get out of debt. I can help you, um, you know, pay off your mortgage or whatever it is. So that's the first thing. Change your story. Now, again, your story comes from your limiting beliefs, by the way. Your story um, are these limiting beliefs, these limiting um, scripts that we read off in our mind. And you can start to change your beliefs right away, right here, right now. I want to give you some actionable tips to change your story and change your beliefs right here, right now. If that sounds good, tap on the screen. Um, we love seeing those um, hearts, by the way, because it's, it's feedback for us. It's feedback. Um, you know, if you're liking this and you're getting value from it, um, then it, it lets us know that you're liking it. It's very cool, I think. It's very uh, awesome. The next thing that you have to be able to do to overcome the fear of what other people think, as Wes Linden says, have a hard party, yeah, is that you've got to change your state. You've got to change your state. Like if you've got a fear of the phone and behind that is, um, well, I'm fearful of what other people think, um, then deep down the limiting beliefs again are going to be, well, I'm not worthy. Um, you know, there's a deeper rooted belief. It could be around money where you've got this fear or this story that money doesn't grow on trees. And, you know, again, that's all linked up to it. But you've got to be able to change your state because we've got unconscious expectations of failure before we get on the phone before we get out there, someone says contact marketing there, before we get out there and actually start to um, approach people when you're out and about, okay? We're bringing up a very disempowered state. And especially when you get a rejection, right? When somebody says no, I always come back to what Wes Linden says, where he says, no, it's either no for now, yeah? And you're gonna revisit them. Um, and it's another step closer to the right people saying yes, okay? There's millions of ways, by the way, that you can change your state. Millions of ways. If you've been along to my one day event, then I tell you that a radical shift in your posture, right, will actually change your state. So in other words, if someone says no, right, I always get people, what do I get them to do? I go, arms in the air, awesome. <laughs> Next, and that changes your state and you're more inclined to at least make another call instead of the downward spiral that we normally go into. The other way to change your state is to change your focus, to change your focus, yeah? Do you know how easy it is to actually shift your focus? 
Do you know that according to neuroscience, holding a thought for just 17 seconds attracts energy of a similar frequency? That means that if you're on a train of thought along the lines of, well, what's the point in making this call? They're going to say no anyway. Then as soon as you hold on to that for 17 seconds, according to the research, it sticks. But the same is true for a positive thought. That somehow if you were to suddenly change your state, change your thinking and focus on something along the lines of, well, actually, um, this is a win-win situation. I have something amazing to talk to uh, everybody about. And you hold on to that thought. You hold on to that winning feeling for 17 seconds. That thought sticks. And then according to neuroscience, if you keep that going for 68 seconds, then it gathers momentum. You have momentum and you're into the subconscious mind. Now, what's the benefit of being in the subconscious mind? as opposed to the conscious mind, now you're into the realm of power. In other words, the subconscious mind processes information at, listen to this, 40 million bits of information per second. The conscious mind, 40 bits of information per second. The unconscious or subconscious mind is a million times more powerful. So as soon as you hold on to the positive thoughts of what you want, the feelings of freedom, the thoughts that this is a win-win, then you activate your subconscious or unconscious mind. You're in the subconscious. You change your state. And then more magic happens. So if you kind of get that, if you kind of like that, and get that and are going to use that, then tap the screen. Caroline Grant says California. Yeah, I'll be there many times this year. But it's very fascinating. So remember, you hold on to one positive thought for 17 seconds, it starts to stick. You change your state into an empowered state. If you keep going with that for about a minute, okay, according to the research, 68 seconds, then you're actually into momentum. You're into an upward spiral of thinking, okay? And that state, not only does it make you feel better, you're more inclined to make more calls, but also the people on the other end of the phone, the other end of your audience that you're talking to, they get the benefit of your great state. If you're holding on to thoughts of a lower vibration, guilt, um, jealousy, any of those things, then that's of a lower vibration and you're going to attract more people along those lines. And this is the law of attraction according to neuroscience, by the way. This is not just um, hype, new agey stuff. This is according to the research. So, um, by the way, if you haven't done so already, go to weslinden.com. Wes has fantastic... Um, stuff there. There's one particular video he has, um, the pigeons, have you seen the pigeons? Where he's talking about the law of attraction, okay? Where you've got to move outside of desperation and you've got to attract, right? And be in this clearer state so you can attract. So all of this is very, very important. Next, how else can you actually overcome the fear of what other people think. If you want to hear something really cool, tap the screen. I want to see a million hearts on the screen um, if you get this. The third point here is that you've got to be prepared. Most people are fearful of getting on the phone, giving a presentation, approaching people about their business because they're not prepared. And I mean prepared mentally and actually prepared physically. You know, your beliefs have been formed, your limiting beliefs have been formed because you've thought about certain limiting thoughts maybe a million times, over and over and over and over again, right? So they're so deep-rooted. But as soon as you start to 
mentally rehearse, visualize yourself, the way you want to show up on the phone, the way you want to sound when you're talking to people, when you're out and about, when you're delivering a presentation, then you'll notice that you feel more prepared when you actually get out there in the real world. And then according to the research on this as well, they've done all this research where they've shown that mentally practicing and doing the thing physically over and over again, you should use your phone calls as practice. You should play a game with this, you know, and you're, you're, all, you're learning from feedback all the time. But by doing it over and over and over and over again, and by seeing it in your mind over and over and over and over again, then you are going to feel prepared. And when you feel prepared, you don't feel nervous. When you feel prepared, you do not feel fearful. I used to feel fear all the time about the idea of speaking in public. But as soon as I mentally rehearsed it over and over again the way I wanted to show up, as soon as I did it over and over again and was prepared to fail forward, repetition really is the mother of all skill, Sam Davis. And hi, by the way, it's great to see you. And um, there's a great saying that I love, by the way, success, success is preparation meeting opportunity. In other words, the more prepared you are, the opportunities were in a sea of opportunity. You're going to notice that you will automatically seize the moment. You'll be spontaneous. You'll be able to make it work. Sing and dance the happy tunes before you make the call. Whatever you need to do. You know, I often say on my one days, we have the, your, your frontal lobe is saying, yes, we're ready to make five calls, 10 calls, 15 calls, 20 calls, right, a day. But then the other, I call them the inner committee members, they're not on board with this. Especially your amygdala, which is responsible for the processing of fears and emotions. So as soon as you decide you're going to raise the bar, make the calls, you're going to actually get out there and take the actions you know you should take. This amygdala is like, this kernel amygdala kind of goes, this is not a good idea. Uh, 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 abort this mission because we are on a course of mediocrity. We should not make these calls. Besides, they might be eating or something. Abort mission. And then suddenly these thoughts creep up as you're about to make calls and say, now is not a good time to make those calls. I always say, I don't know why my amygdala is German, but for some reason that character in there that wants to keep me safe but is overprotective. Um, what can I say? Yeah, I'm not going to do my Arnie impression right now. I think I'll do that on the one day. I'm very excited about my one day in November, by the way. Um, it's, it's completely sold out. Sorry about that if you can't get tickets. Um, we only had uh, 850 tickets. Great venue. I love the venue. Um, but they all went in about two weeks. But I'm, I'm super excited about it. What else? If you're getting value from this and you want to overcome your fears even more, tap the screen. Let me see that heart party there. Anxiety takes over all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to have Emma Cooper at that. We're going to have Natalie Healy and a few other uh, great guests at that as well. Okay, here's a question I get when, when people say, okay, so I start to get on a roll with this. I start to make the calls. I start to feel more confident. What if I fall back into the old patterns? Okay, listen very carefully. You will fall back into the old patterns. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Because those negative programs are so deep rooted. So there's a few things you do there. Make sure that you are surrounding yourself with the right people. Make sure that you can pick up the phone to people who are supportive. You don't immediately go to someone who says, yeah, you know, it's really hard. It's really tough. No, you need to be speaking to people who will say, you know what, that's the, that's the game we're in, but you can do this. You will do this. You will prevail. All you got to do is hold your vision. You're building your character and you need as many people as you can around you who will reinforce that message. Does that make sense? That will keep you focused. And you have so many people 
that you can seek out, if you haven't got those people in your life right now, make it your business to seek out those people who are maybe many levels ahead of you. Okay, so that's one thing you need to do. I'm going to make a point here that is hugely important in overcoming fear of what other people think and fear in general, fear of selling, fear of success, fear of failure. If you want to know this, I want you to tap the screen even more. I don't want to see those hearts fading now. I want five million hearts for this one. This is, for me, the most important point. It's like a master key. Let's just say you're fearful, again, of getting on the phone. You're fearful of getting up and giving a presentation. Behind it is you're fearful of what other people think. Okay, you have got to accept that that's the way it is for now. This is not about giving up. It's about acceptance. Acceptance is one of the most important states to actually overcome fear. Because if you are worried, if you're anxious about the future, worried about what other people are, th are thinking, then you're, you're not present. Your mind is fragmented all over the place. But if you can accept and say to yourself, you know what, sure, I'm, I'm fearful of making these calls and stepping up my game, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Wes Linden says, other people's opinions don't pay your bills. So if you're exactly, so if your why is strong enough, if you feel, I, fe I found when I had something to say, when I felt that, you know what, the world needs to hear what I have to say, then I was able to push aside any fear. And it was a version of feel the fear and do it anyway. And like Wes is saying, if you've got mantras in there along the lines of, hey, um, other people's opinions don't pay your bills, then you'll notice that you're running off a different story again. So acceptance. You're not accepting this the way it's going to be. You're saying, yeah, I'm slightly fearful, but you know what? My mission, my vision is much more powerful than those fears. And you start to see them for what they are. The next thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to continuously let go. By the way, this stuff, this stuff that I'm talking about, it has to be done every day. That's the point as well. You can't just do this for like five minutes on a Friday or once a week or whatever. This acceptance, this letting go, this surrounding yourself with the right people, this being prepared, it's got to be a part of you. You've got to be doing it over and over and over again because you're going to be thinking over and over and over again. Right? There's no break from that. So that's vital that you really make this something that is consistent, just like someone is saying there. Very, very true. So, and by the way, how do you let go, by the way? Well, there's a few ways of letting go. I recommend people relax a lot, that they let go. Even now, by the way, I don't know what it is for, for people over here now, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. For you guys, I know it's late. But even just to breathe, focus on your breathing, even for five minutes where you just, as you inhale, as you exhale, you let go. Even saying the words, let go, let go, let go. You'll notice you switch mental gears. Honestly, I know it sounds simple, but it's profound, it's powerful to be able to switch off this activity and stress and really, really let go of the thoughts they are like floating clouds. But try that just for five minutes. If you breathe in, as you exhale, just say to yourself, let go, let go, let go. Okay? And it makes a difference. So, um, wow, you're, you're, you're hanging in there pretty well, I have to say. And I have to say that my experience, and I know Wes's experience, um, is the fight is worth it all. 
How do you deal with your over-processed mind? Well, again, you've got to take time out to clear your mind, to relax your mind. You've got to do the inner work, right? I'm all about, as you know, um, doing the inner work, making sure you take the time every day, morning and evening ideally, just to get in there and, you know, calm your mind, quiet your mind, and start to mentally rehearse the way you want to show up in your day. It makes a massive difference. Uh, mindfulness and mindset, totally on the same wavelength. Um, listening to the CDs in the car. This is Wes's CD, by the way. It's holding, it's propping up my phone here. There you go. Right? There's four CDs in that. Make sure you get hold of that. Listen to it in the car. Okay? Uh, you can get it from Amazon. I want to make sure I don't uh, topple over the phone here. Um, yeah, some people are on 21 Day Kickstart. Thanks for that. Um, so, remember, there's another way of changing your state, by the way, and that is two main ways. If you want to bring up a state of enthusiasm, then recall a time when you felt enthusiastic, when you felt confident, and in your mind, go back to that time, see what you saw, feel what you felt, hear what you hear, and then you're in it. Remember, after 17 seconds of just recalling a state of enthusiasm, confidence, certainty, you're on an upward spiral, and you're starting to go into the subconscious. And then another way is to latch on to your vision for the future. Right, your vision, if it's compelling, if it's exciting, it excites all your mind cells, it gives you a feeling of freedom. I remember when I had to make so many cold calls and I had nothing else but a, a yellow pages in front of me. I knew nobody, I had no list, anything. What allowed me to pick up the phone eventually, to feel that fear and do it anyway, was that I could literally close my eyes and I could see the future that I wanted for myself. I could bring up the feeling, this amazing feeling, this amazing feeling of freedom. And I could also as well, when I was talking to people, get that sense of the benefit that it would give them. That's huge. All of that's massive. So, um, great. You're still with me, I presume? Yeah, we'll, I'm wrapping it up now. Don't worry, but I hope this has been um, helpful for you because Ultimately, what you're actually, I guess, understanding is that these fears stem from wrong thinking. And when you see them for what they are, then you just ask yourself, well, am I going to let a bunch of bad thoughts, negative thoughts ruin my life? Because that's what it amounts to. You know, these things are like phantoms. You know, show me the fear, put it out there on the table. Where is it? You can't. It's all in our head. And that's why our imagination is so powerful. And um, finally, if you want one final tip, hi from Dublin, cheers. One final tip, yes, see you in London, then tap the screen, tap the screen. Thank you, Claire Louise Harris. Very cool. Um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to uh, fire away with, there with some questions. The final thing I want to say to you, switch your attention, you switch your attention to service, adding value, where you start to say, how can I meet this person's needs? How can I actually make a difference in this person's life? When you actually move into that state of being of service, then you can't feel fearful at the same time. Simple as that. It's impossible to feel, there's a saying, fear and faith cannot occupy the same space. So when you are focused outwardly on meeting the person's needs and adding tremendous value, then the fear disappears. And that's why when people are out there on purpose, when they're absolutely going for it, when they're too busy being on purpose to even do drama, the fear just disappears. So remember, change your story. 
There's numerous ways you can do that, but just start to refocus your attention on the thoughts that you want, the outcomes that you want. And um, make a shift, a radical shift in your movement, any kind of power move, anything like that, they all help you to change your state. Recalling great stuff from your past, your vision for the future, being prepared, surrounding yourself with the right people, acceptance, letting go, these are the main things. You will control your emotions, by the way, Nadia, once you control your thoughts. So thanks everyone. Um, just uh, while we're just saying good night here, uh, maybe just share with me what you took away from this periscope. What was your main aha moment in this scope? Thanks from Scotland. Fantastic. Yay. Amazing. Yes, thank you, Gabrielle. Fear and faith cannot occupy the same space. Cool. Let it go. Acceptance. Yeah, thank you, Nadia. Yeah. Yeah, there are, these thoughts are just phantoms. Very cool. Mindset really is the key. It really is, I don't know, I say 80%. Um, but hey, I mean, it's, it's everything, isn't it? Acceptance for sure. And, and remember, acceptance does not mean you're giving up. Acceptance means, um, yeah, I recognize this. You know what's important about acceptance? It means that no matter what has happened in your past, no matter how many negative things have happened, you don't have to grapple with those Goliaths and try to throw them out of your life. And that's what most people try to do. They try to grapple with their demons. And in doing that, they grow it. They don't realize that whatever you focus on will grow. So that's hugely important. That's why acceptance is so important because you don't have to waste so many of your mind power units, your units of mind power, trying to get rid of the fears. You just have to almost dance with the fear and then say, yeah, I feel it, push it aside, but I'm gonna do it anyway. That's the huge thing. So, um, and then Wes's statement, their opinions don't have to pay the bills. Too right, Diana. Holding the thought, remember holding the thought, 17 seconds, that's how easy it is for you to actually get underway, get on an upward spiral and to gather momentum. Very cool. Have a great holiday, Sam. Fantastic. Yeah, it is. You're just a few seconds away from success or indeed failure. Remember that. Um, you're a few seconds away. So master keys. All right, everyone. I'm going to leave you with a picture of the Vancouver skyline here. And let's see. Your Welcome, everyone. There we go. There's downtown Vancouver for you. There we go. Very cool. Night, everyone. I know it's night for a lot of people in the UK. Uh, it's only the middle of the afternoon here for me. Good night, good night, good night. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, Claire. <laughs> okay, I guess it's night, everyone. Uh, yeah, this will be on for 24 hours, of course, won't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of you on November 21st. Thank you for uh, the great input as always from my friend Wes Linden. He is a legend in the industry. Uh, night, night, Emilio. See you in London, my friend. Absolutely. Simon, see you there as well. Wonderful. Have a great day yourself, Bar. Yep. Wonderful. Don't you love this picture as well? I'll leave you with this picture as well. Over to you.